1993, children across the world were introduced to the hottest new toy line to hit the shelves, Bandai America's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Being based off of the 16th Super Sentai series, 1992's Kyoryu Sentai Ju Ranger, Bandai's western counterpart struck gold when it brought over the Japanese giant robots and spandex costumes while adding their own spin to it, introducing a number of American exclusive action figures and iconic items that have been revisited for years to come. The original Teenagers with Attitude have become cultural icons synonymous with the 1990s nostalgia audiences and have continued to see the return to shelves in many formats in the decades following their initial debut. But Bandai America's original MMPR toy line lasted from 1993 until the first big suit change for the franchise with Power Rangers Zeo in 1996. It wasn't long for the Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, and Tyrannosaurus to make their return. When Bandai launched their Power Playback and Power Rangers Heroes toy lines in 1998 and 1999, which both featured re-releases of the original Mighty Morphin merchandise. While those toy lines are filled with their own fascinating histories to them, today we will be focusing on one of the most fascinating, confusing, and influential toy lines done during Bandai America's 25 year history as owner of the master toy license for Power Rangers. This is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2010. On July 23, 2001, news broke that the Walt Disney Company was to purchase Fox Family Worldwide for $3 billion, giving Disney the rights to over 6,500 episodes of children's entertainment, including the Power Rangers franchise. The tenth season of the series, Power Rangers Wild Force, is often regarded as the final season in the Saban era of the franchise, with the so-called Disney era taking full effect with a production location change to New Zealand in 2003 with Power Rangers Ninja Storm. The Disney era would continue to create a number of now fan-favorite series all the way through the 2000s, but by the end of the decade, it seemed that they had grown tired of the franchise. Rumors began to spread on internet forums that Disney would be canceling the franchise after 2008, with a 17th season which went on to become Power Rangers RPM only happening due to pre-existing agreements with Bandai's divisions in Europe. 2009 was a year of uncertainty about the direction that the brand would be going in, but all signs pointed to no traditional adaptation coming in 2010 for Samurai Sentai Shinkenger. By the end of the year, Power Rangers had wrapped production, and after a few close calls with cancellation in the past, it seemed that this would really be the end. In October of 2009, it was revealed that the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series would be returning to television screens in January of 2010 on ABC Kids. Along with this news, it was announced that a relaunch of the original toy line to target both new audiences as well as catch the eye of the adults who had grown up with the original airing would also happen. While this announcement finally answered the question of what Power Rangers would look like in 2010, there were a few hints that no matter what happened with the show itself, Bandai would keep going with toys either way. Rumors dating all the way back to March of 2009 claimed that Bandai America would continue to develop action figures and toys into 2010, and the first glimpse of some of these would come on October 1st, 2009, when a new action figure for the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger was spotted in a Bandai contest video on Amazon.com. Business Wire confirmed the new toy line would start to hit the shelves by the end of the year. By mid-October, the first pictures of this new toy line would appear online showcasing the six rangers featured in season 1 of MMPR, along with new battle armor, cars, bikes, villain figures such as Goldar and the Putties, and the first Bandai America toy for Tommy's version of the Power Morpher. From these first pictures it was clear that Bandai would be taking a much more modern approach to this relaunched toy line. As in the years that had passed since 1993, they had been known to add much more toy exclusive items that never would have been seen on screen. MMPR 2010 would bring it all covering what was seen in Season 1, but expanding on it and bringing MMPR into the 2010's toy environment. The big kickoff was at New York Toy Fair 2010, with Bandai showing off a number of the big ticket items and initial offerings, such as the 4-inch basic figures, Morphin and Mobile Morph Rangers, Zord vehicles, Dino Cycles, and Morphin Racers, new Battle Gear, and of course the original Megazord and Titanus. The Mixamorph line was a big component of the 2010 toy line. 
These were mini figures that could come apart via special keys or mix and morph stations and recombined in fun new ways. This line had a number of figures released from it from the Disney era of the franchise, and would even make a return in both name and concept years later during the Dino Charge toy line. While this subsection of the MMPR 2010 toy line is important and could warrant a video of its own, I won't be focusing on it much today as other items that they released. These other initial offerings at New York Toy Fair are notable for a number of reasons, such as the amount of products that according to the records on GurnRanger.com never released, such as the Spin Action Rangers. These would have been hardly posable figures, but included special armor that attached that allowed for discs to be launched from the shoulder in a Beyblade style. Images surfaced for blue and green to get these type of figures as well, but just as with red, these also never released. While the giant car armor with an included figure, known as the Red Morphin Racer, did make it to shelves, the Green Ranger version of this shown at Toy Fair never released. Neither did the Tyrannosaurus and White Tiger Dasher Zord vehicles. These types of toys were the core of the MMPR 2010 toy line. Vehicles and armor is created specifically to add more options for the figures. Those that actually did release included the Zord Vehicles line for everybody on the core team except for the Pink Ranger, which were bikes inspired by each ranger's Zords that retailed for $9.99. If that wasn't enough for Zord inspired cycles, for $12.99 you could have gotten the Dino Cycles, released for all of the male rangers during the spring. These were then later replaced by the Cycle Accelerator line for the same price point in the fall, but only red and green got those ones, with an unreleased blue version planned at some point. The $12.99 price point also saw the Morphin Rangers. These were figures that could turn into different types of dragons, and had armor similar to a Battleizer if those suits had existed in the show back in the day. Of course, with all of these battle armors and vehicles based off of different Zord animals, the actual Zord themselves had to make an appearance in the toy line as some of the centerpiece items. And they did. For $24.99, Bandai sold the deluxe Dino Megazord, a brand new mold for the original Megazord that compared to its original 1993 version with its lightning bolt stickers and other differences from the actual show and Japanese toy model, this one would now go for a more show accurate approach and become a very important release in not just this toy line for 2010, but for the years to come. Same was to be said of the deluxe Mix and Morph Titanus, which retailed for $32.99. This would see the first major release of the Carrier Zord himself since his Silver Titanus release during In Space. As the name implied, this was not just Titanus. It was him serving his original purpose, but inside this brachio was a Mixomorph base that could be used with the Mixomorph figures to combine and separate them. However, Megazord could still stand inside of him for a two-thirds complete Ultrazord combination. These were the only main deluxe swords to be released in 2010, however, because no Dragon Zord was ever seen to be in the works. Mega Zord fits nicely into the back of the Zord. Nice. It's a roll figure, so you put together your figure inside with the system. Oh, hey, and his, uh, his legs move, yeah, too. Yeah, his legs move. His legs move uh, like so. While the Zords became one of MMPR 2010's longest-lasting influences on Power Rangers toys for the next decade, Another major change in Power Rangers toys came with the new 4-inch figure line. Mentioned earlier during their cameo in the RPM toy commercial, these figures were released for a number of the MMPR characters, and just like the main toy line of vehicles and Zords, both screen accurate and toy line original characters were created. Of course, the main team of 6 Rangers all released for the line, each coming with their signature weapons cast in black plastic and with special golden armor attachments that could light up, but did you want to combine those weapons for the Power Blaster? Well, you could get the Putty Patroller, which came with the combined Super Cannon weapon, as well as the Blade Blaster with Thunder Slinger attachments, an accessory that is not common to get with most MMPR figures. When you weren't having your Rangers fight Rita's army of soldiers, you could have them fight Goldar of course, with removable wings for both a Season 1 or 2 appearance. And speaking of Season 2, the Emperor of Evil himself, Lord Zed, was also released in this line. While Season 2 was not included in the reversioning of the show that aired on ABC Kids alongside these toys, not only Zed, but the White Ranger appeared in figure form. Other figures included the Dragon Shield power-up figures for red and black, which were seen in the show, as well as blue, a first time for that occurring. Since he already had the Dragon Shield, a brand new power-up for the Green Ranger was designed for this figure line, 
and as a possible way of referencing the metallic armors from Season 3, special transparent releases for red, blue, pink, and even green were also made. These ones featured the same armor attachments as the regular releases, but in silver. Alpha 5 and Zordon even got a figure set released, which was one of the first times an attempt was made to release Zordon in a 3D figure format, and not just as a sticker in the Command Center playset. Many other types of figures were released in numerous store exclusive simpler figure team packs, some with gold diamond designs, a lot of them with less articulation than the main figure lines, and some not even posable at all. There was also an entire subline of stylized ranger releases for both MMPR and at the time other recent seasons that were little unposable minifigures. But figures not your style? Bandai had you covered in the roleplay line as well, with both basic and deluxe battle gear releases. The Blade Blaster made an appearance in both the basic roleplay assortment, as well as part of the larger Red Ranger training set that included a mask, power sword, power morpher, and cardboard enemies for kids to fight. Of course, Tommy's super popular Dragon Dagger also appeared in the basic roleplay lineup of stuff, but he was the one weapon to get the deluxe treatment, and what has become one of the most iconic and infamous toys from the 2010 toy line, the lightsaber Dragon Dagger. A thick release of the toy that when held by the blade and a push of a button, could extend a lightsaber type sword from the hilt. Toys like this or the infrared air attack Megazord, really showed the wackiness and full-on Bandai imagination being implemented to these nostalgic characters and designs. They even repackaged old items that they still had sitting around, like the RPM Nitro Blaster under the new branding. MMPR 2010 was really a major relaunch for Power Rangers toys. For the first time in the franchise's history, a whole toy line without a Super Sentai counterpart to pace off of was something that needed to be done. While MMPR 2010 would only go on to last one year as the proper toy line, this was not always the plan. Before it was announced that Haim Saban had regained ownership of the franchise and would bring back the typical formula of adapting a Sentai series in 2011 with Power Rangers Samurai, Bandai were already considering making a Shinkenger toy line of their own. Designs were created for a new armor fliphead figure of the Shinkenger suits that featured the original MMPR characters before the idea was scrapped to go with the new show that was in development. Though these figures would go on to appear in Samurai as the Mega Mode armor for the Megazord cockpit. A number of the MMPR 2010 toys would be dusted off and repurposed in the years to come. During the Samurai toy line in 2011, a 4-inch figure for Rita Repulsa was finally made to go along with the ones released in 2010, as she was skipped over. 2013, being the 20th anniversary of the franchise, would bring with it the perfect opportunity for Bandai to bring back some of the 2010 toys in the Megaforce toy line. This occurred with the Metallic Force Red and White Ranger releases, new shiny metallic paint jobs on the old 2010 figures that now included power cards for the deluxe Gose Morpher. Plans were made to re-release the Putty Patroller and the Zordon and Alpha 5 2-pack as just repacks with now cards, but only the Putty would actually see a release. However, that was only overseas in countries such as the UK. The stylized ranger figures returned from minifigure blind bags with the power cards as well. But just like the putty, the third series of these stylized ranger figures seemed to only release internationally. The armored red ranger figure was seen again as a bonus item with the Time Life special release of the new Shout Factory DVD sets for MMPR through Lost Galaxy when those were first released back in 2012. This was the same figure as the 2010 version, but just in a little baggy instead of a full box. Some MMPR 2010 toys would even see themselves released in the next dinosaur-based season. During Dino Charge in 2015, as part of the Toys R Us exclusive Legendary Zord box set, these featured some of the random Zord vehicles that were originally designed for MMPR 2010. By far one of its biggest lasting contributions that it would make on Power Ranger toys going forward was the Deluxe Megazord. The mold for this Megazord was the basis used for the Legacy Megazord released in 2013. Of course, the Legacy version would add much more detail to the design, as well as die-cast metal on a lot of the joints, something that it was never really built to withstand, as when a Legacy Dragonzord was finally released in 2014, finally giving it a Dragonzord compatible with the 2010 mold, it led to stabilization issues, especially when combined into the Ultra Zord when Legacy Titanus was released later on the same year. Well, that's what I was about to say anyway. I have to wonder, even when they were making Legacy Megazord, if they had intended to do Titanus and Dragonzord. 
Legacy Titanus himself was being remolded from the 2010 Mixamorph release into a more show accurate design with proper functionality with the other Zords. Due to the design of the 2010 Megazord, it was also the first unofficial entry into what would be known as the Zord Builder line, a promoted feature of every Bandai America major Zord release from 2010 until the time of losing the license for Power Rangers in 2018 where the major connector ports would all be the same on all Zord releases, allowing for a crazy and out of this world combination factor limited only by your imagination. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2010 was not a perfect toy line. It never gave fans the proper Tommy Morpher that they wanted, it had a lot of ridiculous releases, and was really just intended as an attempt to keep the franchise on the shelves, but what it proved was that MMPR could still be marketable, that the original audience who had grown up with the teenagers of Attitude were interested to some extent to once again have the Rangers on their shelves. It also proved that Bandai could have some of the tools needed to celebrate the 20th anniversary, with bringing back these old toys and kick off their successful adult-oriented Legacy Collection that would last from 2013 all the way to 2018 and be spiritually followed up by today's Hasbro Lightning Collection. While some could argue that 2010 was the kickoff to the now never-ending oversaturation of the MMPR designs everywhere you look, and by everybody who was granted the license to do toys on them, there never was a toy line quite like MMPR 2010 ever since. And when it was in production, Bandai made some fun toys that were still too hot to handle. Thank you all for watching this episode of Toku Toy Lines. I hope you all enjoyed revisiting the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2010 line of products. Before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to the extensive records of Power Rangers toys featured on GurrenRanger.com, as without their lists of items, this video could not be possible. What did you think of MMPR 2010? Did you collect any of these toys, and what were some of your favorites? Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at LivingRangerKey or at LightningFigPR, and I hope you all have a more phenomenal day.